Adam drives LA, where I drive the coolest cars on LA's most iconic roads. Now, just to show you where we are, that's the Griffith Observatory up there. We're gonna take today's car down the hill back into the city. And speaking of today's car, we have the 2020 Range Rover Velar. This is the R Dynamic SE. It does have the supercharged V6 under the hood. If you're thinking about buying this car, you should definitely watch the video from start to end because I'm gonna tell you everything I love about this car, everything I hate about this car, and whether I think you should buy one, lease one, or just stay away from this car entirely. Now, if you've not already subscribed to the channel, please do so now. Scroll down, hit the like button, help push this video in YouTube's algorithm to the first page when people search for this car's review. Now, without any further ado, let's jump right in and show you everything. Now, while we're coming down from the twisty road, I want to talk about the engine. This has, as I said, a 3.0 supercharged V6, makes 340 horsepower, 332 pounds-feet of torque, and you do feel it. When you floor it, you definitely feel the power. It's there, but as much as it's punchy, it does feel slow because of the transmission. It shifts very slowly, and that is because a lot of these performance SUVs still don't get dual-clutch transmissions. That's because dual clutches are not good for towing. They still have a torque converter. It's an eight-speed speed automatic so in that sense it doesn't feel as fast as something like a Porsche Macan that would be your better bet if you want the performance normally when I get in the car I'll tell you look I'm not going to spend too much time talking about the exterior and the interior I'm going to talk about the performance because this is a performance car or I'll tell you you know we're not going to talk about the performance because we're in a luxury car we're going to focus on the interior this car I need to talk about the exterior design I need to talk about the interior design and I need to talk about the engine everything it does extremely well and we are gonna start in my favorite place. That would be the exterior design of this car. I have to say, this is one of the most attractive cars on the road today. It still looks like a concept car. The flush door handles, I mean, it just completes the look. This car is, I know it's a British car, so I'm gonna say it is bloody attractive. It is so good looking. It's really like being in a supermodel. Now you can take that however you want. I said it the right way. I don't care how you heard it. And usually when you have a car that looks so sleek, it has that raked front windshield, that low cabin, usually you do all of this at the sacrifice of some practicality. I'm gonna show you why this car did not sacrifice any practicality with the interior, the cabin, the uh, cargo, none of it. This is something the X6 and the GLE tried not to sacrifice and that's why in my opinion those cars look horrendous. Now, I will say right off the bat, this is probably the worst color to get for this car because it really does have a lot of these gorgeous reflections and puddles that you don't see when you're in a kind of a bland color like this. Life is too short to drive boring colors. White is one of them. This car looks great in a silver, a dark gray, something like that. So let's start up front. I love the sleek headlights, the gorgeous LEDs that they do. I mean, the grill looks fantastic. Things are real. They're actual openings. As you come around the side, you're gonna see the side profile this is where all the magic is the whole top half of the car is painted black that is why it looks so sleek and the bottom half there's a little bit of black trim I don't know what this line is I know they did that to give it this streamlined effect to make it look a little sportier that's something I could have done without but maybe it contributes to looking lower and sportier as you come around the back you see these rear tail lights the amount of detail in there a lot of people won't even notice this I noticed it right off the bat I love the way these LEDs look and while we're in the back just another touch of why this car looks so clean and minimal they even hid the rear windshield wiper under the spoiler look at that how cool is that every car should find a way to do something like this Range Rover does this throughout most of their models now speaking of that spoiler that spoiler is more functional than most sport car spoilers look at this around the rear you'll see it it actually has openings it matches the car it doesn't look out of place so far everything is just a green light on this car 
Now jumping into the interior, there is a lot to talk about, so I'm gonna go kind of fast here, so try and keep up. As you enter, the first thing you notice is the materials, the quality. You notice the two big screens, there are big monitors, we're gonna get into those in a minute. You notice the gorgeous steering wheel with some chrome accents around it, done very nicely. Now touching the steering wheel, I mean, it feels high quality, it doesn't feel cheap, even though it's thinner, this isn't a sport car, you don't need a very thick steering wheel. On here, you do have some touchscreen buttons. Now you'll see, this is a theme in the car, touchscreen everywhere. The touchscreen buttons, although you can physically push them to adjust some things, you can also scroll your finger along it to reduce and increase the volume. You can play the next track, things like that. This is a very cool system. There's not a ton to change into the infotainment up front, which is also entirely digital, but the steering wheel looks good, feels good. The paddle shifters, everything. I mean, look at even the turn signal, something that nobody pays attention to. They have put little metal accents on it. It feels expensive. I love that. Just to the left of the steering wheel, you will notice there are three speakers on the door. This is insane. The sound quality in this car is so good, and that is why. And another reason, they have speakers in the cargo of this area. This car does not have a third row seat. They have speakers in the cargo because it wants to feel like a surround sound. Everybody needs to take notes. And the materials, they feel good, they look good. Everywhere you touch, I mean, yes, there's a lot of the piano black, we're gonna talk about that, but even up here on the dash, the leather, the way it's tilted, the, the AC vents, the, I mean, everything is just hidden when it needs to be and highlighted when we wanna see it. Little chrome accents everywhere, it looks so good. Let's talk about the seats for a second. The stitching, I mean, it is so classy in here. It feels nice, the material's good. They probably will wear fast considering that it's a Range Rover and they're notorious for that but the car has so much to offer as far as interior quality the seats one of the options you can do you can actually say you want a vegan leather and it's made out of recycled plastic I love that they at least offer that option for people who may have turned down the car because of their lifestyle that's a cool thing Range Rover is thinking a little bit ahead now when you first turn on the car the immediate thing you notice is the screen up here tilts over to welcome you it's nice it's like a little intro playing make the excitement of getting into a car like this just that much more now down here at the same time the gear lever rises when you turn on the car it hides when it's off to be flush and have that clean clean look the first monitor up here on top is where your general entertainment stuff is this is where your map is uh, your music now it's not super responsive it could be a little bit quicker and I will tell you right off the bat Land Rover is notorious for these digital screens failing I've seen it multiple times there are many people People that have returned their car because they lemon them out because of those screens now the lower monitor is where the more interesting stuff happens first off if you have your map open on the top screen and you wanted to adjust the music or the volume or something you can use the pull down and adjust everything for the top screen by using the bottom screen that's a very cool touch now everything is touch screen here except you have the volume knob and next to it you have two little scroll wheels with their own screens it looks fantastic this adjusts the temperature but if you click them you can adjust your seat temperature you have heated and cooled seats that is a cool touch now even more than that if you want to adjust the fan speed you click the fan button and next to it now that screen will adjust your fan speed this is such a cool way I've said this in my Lincoln Aviator review of trying to hide unnecessary things these features that you don't use all the time and try to incorporate them into one when you can they've done a fantastic job here this does have the massaging seats now if you go over to the vehicle tab you can adjust the various vehicle settings and as you go through them I can feel the air suspension moving the car up and down below that you have your scroll wheel for the gear selector I love the way this is very cool very minimal next to it you have a cup holder that's hidden uh, and then below that you have two more cup holders for some reason one of them is square let's let the British figure out why that is now something this car has that I loved in the Lincoln Aviator and I could not put my finger on it now I can is the really wide center console maybe Maybe that's because I hate people so I like being further from my passengers but in this one it's all piano black so you do see a ton of fingerprints so you better have microfiber cloths handy and as cool as this big dual monitor setup is, it is incredibly distracting because not only it's off your vision sight, so you do have to look over, it is all digital, so you do have to really know where you're pushing and you have to look down because it is pretty far down low. This is incredibly distracting. Car manufacturers are supposed to find ways to keep our eyes on the road and not take them off.
Let's jump into the rear seats. Now, when you enter there, initially, there's not a ton to talk about because one, there are other options to add a screen in there, a digital screen to adjust the climate controls. And they are very similar to the ones up front. It is a digital dial with its own little screens. So it looks fantastic. This one doesn't look as good because it doesn't have that option. So I think you need that option for it to feel just as nice in the back. The door is nice. It has a lot of speakers. Like I said, speaker in the cargo area right behind the rear passengers. Plenty of headroom, plenty of legroom. Like I said, they did not sacrifice practicality at all by having that sleek design. As I said, the cargo is not compromised because of that sleek design either. Plenty of space in the trunk and the seats do fold down up front if you needed more space. Now, before I wrap up the review and give you my conclusion, let me tell you a little bit about the driving experience. When you're driving this car, you do definitely have a sense of superiority. And I know that it's a nasty thing to say, but you do feel better than the other cars on the road because you're in such a nice interior. The car drives fantastically and you know how good it looks on the outside. There's definitely a sense of accomplishment now driving it it definitely has a sporty feel and that's due to two things I think mainly the seats are pretty firm they're tight but they're still very comfortable I don't know how they really achieve that usually it's one or the other this one feels right in the middle of both but a major thing is that sloped raking windshield up front makes it feel like you're in a sporty car even the dash up here all of this the center console is raked like that has that slope so you feel like you're in a sleek car it really matches the exterior design of the car now that i've been driving this thing around all day i think it's a good time to tell you if i think you should buy one or not i already told you i love the interior the engine is fantastic and the exterior design is just jaw-droppingly gorgeous so why am i going to tell you not to buy this car that's because if i told you to buy a range rover or a land rover i wouldn't be able to sleep with myself i know too many horror stories from personal friends and family who have owned range rovers in the past that tell me the car just spent too much time at the shop getting fixed i just didn't get to enjoy it now i want to tell you to lease it but i'm even trepidatious in telling you to do that because again what's the point of leasing a nice car if it's going to spend more time at the dealership getting fixed than it is at your garage at your disposal to drive around and use it for what it was meant for the interior this techie kind of screens any technology in a car like this it's just prone to issues like i said the amount of lemons that came out of the land rover brand the amount of warranty service that came out i just can't tell you to get this car now i want to tell you you should experience it this is a great all-around mid-size suv that does everything well when it functions so you make the call take my advice with a grain of salt if you want it you take the risk and that is going to wrap up yet another video thank you so much for watching make sure on your way out scroll down hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so and follow me on instagram the handle is adam drives la just like the name of the channel that's where i post cool behind the scenes content that you will not see on my youtube channel and with all that said thank you so much and i will see you in the next car